Hi, I'm Wade Harvey, and today I wanted to take the paradigm that I talked about in an earlier video of uh, a tension between the actual and the ideal, and uh, show how we can use that uh, paradigm to help us to solve problems. Uh, what we can do, we can compare the actual to the ideal and search for the differences between uh, them and narrow down what we focus on to just those differences and then take action to help us solve the problem. So let's see how this works. So there's four steps in the problem solving process as I see it. Uh, first we define the ideal and the ideal in programming in the programming world is the requirements or whatever uh, uh, or the, something like that. And um, but in other pro problems, when we're dealing with other problems, it's just a mental picture of how we want something to be. In the second step, uh, we define the a actual situation or get to know the actual situation. Well, in the programming world, this is usually our program that we're working on, or or a program that we've inherited back from somebody else. And. Uh, the third step is to find the difference between uh, just to isolate our attention uh, to the, what's different between the parts that are different between the actual program and uh, what the requirements are asking us to do instead of trying to focus on everything at once. We, uh, in the fourth step, uh, after we've uh, narrowed it down to just what's changing. Then we try to find actions that we can take uh, to eliminate the differences between the actual situation and the ideal. Now, I like uh, this approach because it uh, helps me to not have to rediscover uh, the problem solving process in addition to trying to solve the problem. Once I know that the, these four things are all I have to worry about, then I can focus more on solving the problem rather than uh, trying to rediscover how to solve problems every time. So let's look at the first step, uh, is defining the ideal. Well this is, uh, in the programming world, this is getting to know the requirements, uh, what has been given to you, the way they want, somebody wants the uh, program to function. But it, uh, it can be pretty complicated with requirements and uh, they can be very detailed and so uh, we have to get to know the, the component parts that make up uh, how they want the, we have to identify what parts they're talking about, uh, which fields are involved, what, which uh, controls are involved on, on the uh, web page or, or what uh, code behind uh, is involved. Uh, so uh, we have to know what's involved and we also need to know that that's the kind of the static part and we also have to know the relationship and uh, kind of the moving part or the logic part of what they're asking uh, to be accomplished. And once we understand the requirements uh, we need to understand uh, the actual program that we have, uh, and this can take some time if the program is complicated uh, to uh, get an understanding of the flow of the program. If we haven't worked on it for a while or if we inherit it, it may take a while to uh, get a big picture of uh, how the program works. But uh, we also need to break that big picture down into individual parts and see how the individual parts interact and what the logic is between them. But once we've got uh, those two pieces of information, what the ideal is and what the actual is, uh, we can uh, then search for the differences uh, between the ideal and the actual. And this helps us to narrow down uh, our focus so we don't have to worry about the whole program. All we're worried about is what's changing and uh, we identify what static parts are changing 
That's the first, uh, which uh, data fields, what uh, uh, components on the screen are changing. And then uh, you might even say which routines in the code behind. Then you also have to uh, look at uh, the logic of what logic is changing. So you have to understand the logic and uh, uh, see what pieces are going to be changing. Once you've reduced, reduced your focus to only those parts that are changing and you've got them listed out on a piece of paper or whatever, then uh, the next step is to take act. Uh, well, we we'll use what we know to help us understand the unknown. This is a general principle uh, that applies to everything. Uh, we can't use what we don't know to explain what we don't know, so we have to use what we know to explain the unknown. So we may not know how to uh, make all the changes that are needed. We may not know the program, uh, let's say, the coding syntax or something. Uh, so, but we do know go Google, and we do know where we keep our reference book in our, our shelf or whatever. Uh, so, we take, or we know somebody we can ask. So we uh, take these steps uh, to help us identify what actions are going to be needed in order to uh, make what is this uh, current situation turn that in to uh, the ideal situation. So uh, we go through the, those uh, actions one by one to, uh, and we often have to revise uh, what uh, we think is changing and so forth as we go along. But uh, that's uh, how we find the actions that we can use to transform the actual to the ideal. So uh, I like to take notes at each step uh, uh, to learn more about the problem solving process itself and uh, also to help me stay focused. Uh, so if I'm interrupted, I, uh, I, I can come back to my notes and see where I am. And this is, I think, especially helpful when uh, the logic's very complicated. Uh, kind of like putting a bookmark in, in uh, fluid logic. So I think that's very helpful. So this is how we can use the paradigm of uh, the tension between the actual state that something's in and the ideal, and use that to uh, help us uh, search for delta, search for the what's changing. Delta means uh, a difference, and uh, it's a letter in the Greek alphabet, in the triangle, and that uh, is. Uh, once we find what's different, then all we have to uh, do is find what actions are needed in order to uh, eliminate those differences. And this allows us to transform what the actual program is into the ideal program that we want it to be. Thanks for watching.